Now, I already had Keyshot running, so all I had to do was tab over to Keyshot, but if you didn't have Keyshot running, what hitting that BPR button would do would be to launch Keyshot for you and then toss your objects into here. I'm going to go ahead and move around the camera to the front here, and let's talk about camera navigation. Uh, I'm not going to get into specifics on that because you can set it up however you'd like. There's a couple different ways to find that. If you want to see all the hotkeys in Keyshot, what you can do is you can hit K, and that'll bring up the Keyshot hotkey menu. You can also go up here to Help and click this Hotkeys Overview, and that'll just launch this little window right here. And here's all the hotkeys that you're going to use within Keyshot. And right up here at the very top is your camera hotkeys, or, you know, your ability to tumble, pan, dolly your camera. You can do that right here, which we'll get to in just a second. But if you go down here to Setup Details, it's going to take you to the Preferences hotkeys. And here's where you can choose how to control your camera controls. Uh, down here at the bottom, you also have these presets. I have mine set to Maya. You can set it to ZBrush. You can set it to Keyshot Default, or you can set it to whatever you'd like. Or you can do a custom and set it to however you want. I'm going to keep it at Maya for now, and I'm going to go ahead and hit um, Save Changes. Alternatively, you can go over here to Edit, Preferences, and then just go down here to Hotkeys, and then there's where your camera controls are at. So now that you can control your camera however you'd like, I'm going to move the camera around so we're looking at it this way. Now, just like before when I said we were going to send it over, even though we didn't technically assign any materials to this Threadripper or this logo, it did go ahead and assign the matte cap gray material, and then here's that reflective red material that we applied. And because we didn't do any fancy material assignments or anything like that, you're going to see if we go over here to the scene, we have one, two, and three different meshes, which of course correspond to our three different subtools. Now I'm already selecting stuff and getting a little bit more involved than I wanted to, so let's take a step back and talk about Keyshot as a whole. So we're going to start over here, right up here at these workspaces here, you're going to see there's a default workspace here. You can set this to whatever you'd like. If you do a lot of animation, you can set it to the animation setup here. But just for now, I'm going to keep it with the startup. I'm sorry, the default. And at the very bottom here, you're also going to see that we have a light theme and a dark theme. If you want to choose a dark theme to kind of match, you know, ZBrush or Photoshop, since those are a little bit darker theme now, you can go ahead and do that. I'll go ahead and keep it light for now. Just to the right of that, you're going to see CPU usage. We're using, of course, the AMD Ryzen Threadripper 1950X, which we discussed in the intro. If you want more information on the specifics of the hardware, we're going to see we have 32, it says 32 cores. It's actually 16 cores, 32 threads. And if you want to utilize everything, uh, you can go ahead and put that up to 100. Um, the only reason I had to drop down is sometimes I do a lot of things concurrently. I'll be using Using ZBrush, I'll be streaming to Twitch, I'll be streaming to YouTube, I'll be rendering a video using Camtasia or Movie Studio Pro, I'll have a bunch of internet tabs open, I'll have a bunch of reference images open, so I've got a lot of things going on when I'm in development and doing development type tasks. So usually if I'm doing all that kind of thing uh, and I want to dedicate a lot of resources to Keyshot but not necessarily 100%, I'll drop that down to like 94%. But for now, I'll just go ahead and keep that at 100% CPU usage. And even at 100%, what I can do is I can, hit, I can hit this pause button. So if I need to hop over to another program and I want to utilize a little bit more of my CPU for other tasks, I can just hit this pause button right here. And that'll go ahead and pause those processes. If you want to see those, what you can do is you hit Control-Shift-Escape on a Windows machine and you can go over here to Performance. And under CPU here, if you right click, probably you're probably going to see the overall utilization. So this is the overall CPU utilization. So if I right click this and change graph to logical processors, here's all your V32 threads. And this gives you a little bit more information specifically about the processor and what's going on and the speed. But here you're going to see if I unpause this and move it around a little bit, and then we'll go ahead and go back to our task manager here. You're going to see these all spiked up because it's using all of those threads to quickly render out your scene. So it's taxing your entire CPU, which is a good thing, because you want to get as fast renders as possible. Let's go ahead and close that out. And right now we're going through this top ribbon. If you want to, you can also go through these file menus here. So this is pretty self-explanatory. You got file, save, file, save as. You can save these things. I've already saved this one in particular as a Threadripper logo. It's going to save it as a BIP file. And that's just going to save all of my meshes, all of my material assignments, basically everything I'm doing in Keyshot as a Keyshot file. Under the edit menu, there's a couple things. You can go to add geometry and edit geometry in the pro version, which we'll get to in a bit. Your environment settings, we have ground shadows. You also have occlusion ground shadows, which we might get to in just in a bit. All of this lighting stuff, we can also go over here to this lighting and change those here, but it's also over here in this menu. Same thing with camera. You're going to have a lot of camera controls over here. And this is your project view. This is your library view, incidentally. So everything having to deal with your project, like what materials you're actually using, what environment you're actually using, what lighting and camera properties you're actually using is going to be project oriented. So it's over here in your project area. And then over here is your library of things you want to use. So here's a bunch of different environments you can pull from. Like for instance, if we can go over to outdoor. And then if we choose an a outdoor environment, if we just double click this, that's going to Let's go ahead and do this village lawn here. Let's go ahead and put our logo in the lawn. And then if we go over here to our environment, this is where we can tweak the settings of this particular environment. So this is our library of stuff we want to pull from. And then once we've applied it to our project, this is where we go to manipulate that stuff.
Anyway, back up here, we'll go to image. Uh, here's where we change our resolution presets for our image that we're rendering. You can go down here, you can pull from different presets of you know, landscape, portrait, custom, etc. And you can also lock the aspect on the resolution. So if you want to change this to say a landscape of 720 by 480, that'll go ahead and make our image, our canvas image this big. Now if you change to something like 1280 by 720, what it's going to do is resize your background here. And unfortunately it also resizes your window. Now if you're working at a full resolution or full monitor resolution, uh, you can go ahead and just double click this uh, toolbar this uh, key shot bar up here, which you actually can't see, I'm not capturing it, but it's just above this. Uh, you can just double click that, it'll go ahead and maximize your window. However, I'm working on a much larger monitor, I'm only capturing a portion, so what I would have to do is go ahead and grab the corner and just kind of move this around. Now you're gonna see, while I move that around, it kind of does some interesting things. So if I go over here to image, resolution presets, and then I choose 1280 by 720, I can also go over here to this image, and again, these are just the project images, so we're using the same thing. Oops, it looks like I, when I resize this, it's actually changing my image size. So if you don't want that to happen, so again, if we go over here to image, presets, landscape, and we'll do 1280 by 720. It's gonna do 1280 by 720, but as soon as I move this screen, you're gonna see those numbers get smaller and bigger. If you don't want that to happen, again, 1280 by, oh, let's do 1280 by 1024. Just hit that little lock key. And now as you're moving your screen, um, your image isn't gonna change. And again, if you're just working on a single, you're know, filling up your entire monitor, you can just go ahead and double click your toolbar, but I'm going to have to go ahead and resize this. But actually, while I'm doing that, if I'm just working with the, in the confines of what's seen on my screen, I'm going to go ahead and leave that lock off. So as I change the resolution of this, it's going to go ahead and keep that image to whatever I have on my background. So it's kind of up to you if you want a specific aspect ratio and you're matching your product to that, go ahead and lock that up. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just keep it unlocked. Moving right along, let's go over here to render. Rendering we're gonna to get to in a bit, but you can go down here to the render and you'll see you have a queue. If you're using Pro, which we are, uh, you're gonna have a render queue in here and you can also have layers and passes and render region, which can also be a control over your image. You're gonna see a little region tab over here. So you can actually drag out where you want it or what portion of your image you wanna render. But we'll get to this in a bit. So I'll go ahead and close that window out. Underneath the view here, you're gonna see we have selection outlines turned on. So when we're in our scene mode and we do a selection, we're gonna get selection outlines. If you don't like that, you can turn it off here. Uh, heads up display is interesting. If you do a heads up display, um, you can see how many triangles, how many frames a second you're getting, how much time you sat rendering here, what your focal length is in your camera, all of these things. So it's kind of up to you if you wanna have that up or not. For now, I'm gonna go turn that off and also cycling through your model sets, which we'll get to in a bit. Window. Uh, you can, you can, if you want to, you can go to window and you can turn off your ribbon and get rid of that. You can also turn your ribbon back on, or you can also see the hotkey for that is R. So if you hit R in your screen, it'll go ahead and turn the ribbon off. And also if you hit your space bar, it'll go ahead and turn off the scene view over here. And I think if you hit M, it'll go ahead and turn off your library as well. So you can use a bunch of hotkeys or you can go up here. Cloud library we'll get to in a bit, but this is just a way to bring in either legacy materials that Keyshot has removed in recent versions or user created library assets that you can import into Keyshot for your own projects. And of course help, we've already talked, we've gone into, you can check for updates, you can go into about, learn about yeah, that key shot through the manual. You can also go into the hotkey overview here and set up details and all that stuff we've already talked about. And you're also gonna have the ability to just click and drag anything things off. So I can grab my scene view here. I can grab my material or my libraries or my text here. I'm gonna just pull this off into its own thing. And once I've done all of these changes, what I can do is save this as a default or as worth a workspace. Um, however, if you wanna go back to where you started, you can just go over here to the drop down and then just choose default. And I'm gonna go ahead and revert back to that. So of course you can save your own workspace or you can go and choose any one of these presets there. 